Hi quilters! Welcome back to the channel and I have had a slew of new subscribers so thank you very much. Um, scraps. How many of you have a scrap pen that looks like this? Or like this? Or maybe even like this? Yes, we, we accumulate our scraps. And I found that as I'm accumulating scraps, they become harder and harder to use because you cannot see what you have and you have to work the fabric before you can use the fabric. Meaning if they're all rumpled up in a tote, they're all wrinkly and then you have to iron them. And so it's a chore to keep them and it's a chore to use them. I did start something uh, concerning my scraps differently about five years ago and it was a game changer. So as I cut my fabric and usually I'm working from strips anyway, let's say I need to make some two and a half inch half square triangles. I cut using my easy, easy angle ruler, which requires two and a half inch strips, which is pre-cut friendly. I go ahead and make my what, however I, many I need and then I'm left over with a scrap of fabric, however long, could be really long, could be really short. If it's short, I go ahead and cut those into two and a half inch squares and I will show a picture of my two and a half inch square bin right now. Um, I also keep a two inch bin right here and I ha actually have a one and a half inch bin. So anytime I'm making little cuts and it's creating scraps, I'm going ahead and cutting them down unless it's a string that's quite long. I kind of drape that up over, I have a dowel pressing rod that my dad made me. Um, I, I'm using that to keep all of my fabrics and hang them up and then when I get so many in the dowel rod tips and I will put a picture of that right here I I um go ahead and they're all ironed and pressed all I have to do is neatly fold them up and put them in a bag and let me show you the bag here is the bag I kind of deflated out as much as possible and that way the pieces stay as pressed and flat as possible. Right here you can see some leftover binding that I have. So I did not opt to cut any of these down into two and a half inch squares or whatever. So what do you do with these? Well, I've made string quilts. I've made about two of those, but I've made, I don't know how many scrap quilts. And we all know when you cut fabric, you make more scraps. So your scrap pile never really dwindles. Have I got a brainstorm? I had a brainstorm and have I got a deal for all of you. We could take these and make a mosaic quilt with not having to sew any of these together. And you're like, what? So this has been simmering in my mind now for quite some time. Um, about a year ago, year and a half ago, I went to a quilt show and they had the mini quilts and someone had taken little bitty half inch squares and cut them out of fabric and then somehow adhered them to the quilt. I don't know how they were adhered. I assume like a applique heat and bond or something. And then over that, they had this sheer fabric and it softened it a bit, but it also kept the edges from fraying. I'm like, could I do that? Only on a way bigger scale with bigger pieces. Have I played with this yet? No. Am I going to play with it? Yes, I've been wanting to do this at my long arm now for quite some time, but I'm telling you right now, you do not have to use your long a long arm. You can use your regular sewing machine to do this. 
what you will need. You will need a nice size backing, however big you want to make your quilt. You are going to have to make sure you have enough scraps to make a whole quilt out of whatever size backing you choose. I have chosen a 108 backing. I am confident that my bucket of scraps will not have a problem making a quilt that is 108 by 108 minus six inch perimeter around, okay? You will also need the fabric to overlay it. So let me get that. There's the backing I selected. Funny that it's squares. <laughs> and I'm not making this out of squares. And I got this on Amazon. It was like $8. It's 120 wide. It's 10 foot wide. Ivory by the yard. And there's five yards of this. So I'm not going to use it all. And what is it? It is very, this is double folded. This is very, very sheer fabric. I don't know what this fabric's called. There's not a tag on it. Amazon's gotten really bad about their textiles having the wrong tag or the wrong textile content. So be careful what you use. I will figure out what this is called and let you know. Um, this will be what I cover the top pieces with. To encapsulate my raw edges so they don't fray. Now, this bag I got at the thrift store. It has lots of pinks and purples. I'm wondering if I have enough pieces to make some kind of pastoral scene where there's like a meadow with flowers and trees and the sunshine and the sky and clouds. I don't know. It would be just as neat if I would select and just do random pieces. That would be just as neat. If you have Elmer's glue, you can do this. So what you will do, you will need your backing and you will need your batting. You will fuse those two together, however so you choose to do that. You will then and I, they have iron-on batting, so that's what I would recommend. Then you're going to take your Elmer's glue, and you're going to glue all your scraps to the top of your batting. And then you're going to take this mesh, and I don't know if this is nylon or what this is. I think it was sold as like shower curtain stuff, but it's very, very transparent. It's like a mesh could be organza. I don't know. I need to look this up. And then you're going to lay this over the pieces you have glued down. And then you're going to stitch. And you're going to stitch densely. I would recommend stitching about every half inch. I will probably um, stitch every three quarters of an inch or maybe half inch all the way across the quilt. And then I'll turn around and turn the quilt and then do the same to where I have a grid to where I know everything's gonna be held down. I'm very excited about this project because I've never seen this done before and I'm gonna do it on my long arm. So I, there isn't gonna be no piecing involved. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be taking scraps like this, cutting them down to whatever size I want and then just putting them on, on the quilt top and then laying that over it and quilting it. Will I have to use glue? Maybe. I don't, I don't know. I will probably take glue with me to try that out. But let's go to part two of the video. Um, of course, that's in a different location. I'm very excited about this and I'm not sure how long this could take. The quilting in it is going to be extensive. I'm going to say that's going to at least take me 10 hours. And then the layout of the fabrics are going to take me a while. But 
I'm looking forward to getting rid of this bucket of scraps. I have scraps and scraps and scraps and scraps. And these are not all my scraps, okay? I have other pieces of fabric that are bigger scraps that are still, I can still utilize them to cut my strips from. So I'm not including those scraps. I've got a whole 30 gallon tote of those scraps. But these strings, I've made the traditional string quilts and I don't want to throw this fabric away. The cost of fabric, I don't even want to pass this on to somebody. I want to utilize it. I do not want to cut it up and then it create a different size scrap. I want to utilize all my scraps in this bucket. Do you think I can do it? Let's find out. Hi everyone. So part two, we're now in a different area. We're in the garage. <laughs> I've got my backing loaded. I've got my batting on this. I think I'm just gonna go where I just put scraps on here. I'm not gonna do a pattern. And you could uh, experiment on a smaller piece by just using a scrap piece of batting and try this with your glue and whatever you use as your backing. Um, and of course, a scrap piece of the fabric, whatever that fabric's called. So I'm gonna start laying out some of the scraps and I'll probably do a time-lapse video of that and insert it here. Okay, so a lot of these scraps are gonna have the selvage edge in it. Make sure you don't put that in here. Although you could, I'm just gonna rough cut that off. As you see how jagged that other edge is. Okay, it doesn't matter. And I said I didn't want to let any scrap go to waste, so even this is going to get used. So I'm loving this layout process because I can use a piece like this without having to trim it down. I can just layer this on top of another piece of fabric and it adds depth. I don't know. Okay, I'm finding a flood of memories coming back. So I didn't realize this, but as I touch these scraps, which I've used before, it, it is triggering memories of quilts from the past. I've come across several fabrics. These were given to me by Sobeka in one of her um, drawings that she did, or giveaways. I got some of her scraps. I'm seeing placemats that I made for a So Yeah um, hospice uh, charity thing. I'm seeing a tree. I made a tree of life baby quilt. I'm coming across all these fabrics from the past. And I can honestly say this quilt I'm hanging on to because I know all the work it took to get these little pieces of fabric to the state that they are now. And regardless of all the work and all the quilts that I've done before, this memorializes all my work. I'm really liking this. And is it taking a long time? <clears throat> yes. Can I cut my pieces down even further? Yes. I'm finding that I'm coming to my greens and my neutrals that whenever I was doing a project, they were all bagged up at the same time. So I'm gonna have to open another bag to get a little bit more variety. Um, as you can see, the, the quilt is taking shape. I have not glued down any of these pieces. I, I, I don't think I'm gonna, the only ones I will probably glue down are the wrinkled ones that got, did, did get wrinkled in the bag. I'm really liking this. It's very random and I, some of these fabrics I haven't gazed upon in a long, long time and it makes me happy. It makes me smile. I'm touching fabric 
that I've had for years. I'm coming across fabric that was gifted to me. I came across fabric that was my grandmother's. I did not cut that piece down and now I can't even find it. <laughs> Where did it go? It's pink butterflies right here. And just that little snippet. I'll always look for this in the quilt because that fabric, that piece of fabric means more to me than any of these other ones. I was not prepared for this. This is kind of an emotional thing. Um, this would also be great for uh, memory quilts. If you don't want to go to the trouble of piecing a quilt, just cut it into little bits and, or just leave them whole the shirts and all and just put that stuff over it and then you're going to encapsulate it and show box it in a quilt. Um, buttons probably would need to be removed, but I'm really, I'm really liking this process. I'm going to go ahead and get this all filled out and then I'm going to lay the fabric on top of this to see how it looks. I'm hoping that this is not an epic fail. All right, y'all, be prepared to make a huge mess with this because to get variety, I'm pulling out all the bags. Mind you, these wrinkled ones were not mine. They were the one I got at the thrift store. But I found orphan blocks, which I have happily put throughout this, this quilt top. So these did not make the cut because of my centers not matching up correctly. I just didn't put them in the quilt. I'm now going back over this and making sure I don't have any batting holes where my batting is showing through, although I don't think it's gonna matter because no one's gonna see it. I have a little bit of this area to fill in. I see a hole right here. I'm gonna fill those in and then I'm gonna overlay the white fabric over this. Okay, now's the time where I'm going to take this white fabric and lay it out over this and I've got plenty of this so I'm just going to overhang it. This is very slippery. And I found the selvage edge of this and that's what I'm using. This is very, very sheer. All right, there's five yards of it. I'll have to cut this down as I go, but I know it's 108. So I'm gonna kick this out of the way. And then I'm going to stitch this down. And I am even encapsulating the loose threads in this because it adds warmth. I am not gonna worry about that red thread fraying off the red fabric onto the white fabric because I don't care. This is just so many memories. I want to capture everything. Okay, as I make this pass, I've stitched down that side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this side taut and then stitch down this side. But as I make my pass, I want to make sure that none of my fabrics folded up. Although if they did, that would just add interest because we all know that the wrong side of the fabric is a different color than the right side. So don't fret over it. And I actually stitched on my batting down there where I didn't uh, stitch all the way onto the fabric. I'm going to just stitch wherever I'm going to stitch down here. So. Okay, now that I have this stitched, as you can see, I've pulled it taut and I may pull it more. 
I'm gonna go ahead and stitch across the top and lock that in. And I'm gonna put my locker on for this. Okay, I am now ready to make my stitches and it looks like my needle hole, the fabric, if you do not have a sharp needle in this, it's going to snag this fabric. So take the time to change your needle at the beginning of this project. You may have to change your needle several times. My tension is great. I'm going to shorten. Actually, I think I'm going to leave this long stitch. I actually like the long stitch. I'm going to move down half an inch and then I'm going to stitch across. Um, and then I'll come back to the camera and show you how that looks. And I, yes, I will have some of this to trim off, so I will be wasting some fabric. But they're going to be pieces that are this big and I'm okay with that. Okay, so I have made several passes with this. And what I'm finding, I can only travel one way with my machine head because my thread wants to break. I've spaced these about half an inch apart and then I went to about an inch and a half apart. I'm doing random um, random sizes and this will hide any imperfections in the straight line of quilting. Because this sheer fabric has enough stretch, it's it's not stretchy this way. It's not really stretchy, but because it's so not stretchy, it's going to give this quilt the effect of a huge puff. So I may not go back and stitch this on the grid. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But I've made a complete pass, and now I need to roll my quilt. I'm going to do that now, and I'm going to stitch a few more rows out, and then I'll add more fabric. Um... I'm going to call this a success. This is uh, going better than I expected. I do have the pressing issue of my folds in this sheer fabric. I probably should have figured out what fiber contact content that was and ironed it, but I did not do that. Um, so I'm having to pull this pretty taut to get those lines out. When you do this at a smaller scale, you could do this by block. You could make a block and then sew your blocks together. Do a quilt as you go thing and then sew your blocks together to get the same effect. Or you can glue your pieces down and go for broke and just make a big one. Um, whatever you can manage. This will work on a long arm or a domestic machine. So use what you got. Um, let me pan over this and show you how the color wash looks in this now. Okay, so here we are at the quilt and obviously the darks you can see and the lights you can see, but the patterns, they somewhat get washed out. I have lots of solids in this. Those really show up nicely. There are some prints that do show up. Uh, I really like how this is going and I'm going to continue on. I'm not sure what the next step will be, but um, as far as I'm going to have to lift this up and, and put it back so that I can continue laying my pieces out. Uh, I see that because I did a wide stitch here, that piece probably needs to be captured, so I may come back in with random lines going this way. I really like it. It has been fun, and I am using up my scraps, and there's some scraps on the floor. It's mostly salvages, or whatever else I've dropped, but... Yeah, this is, this is working well. It even washed out the black fabric and just turned it like a gray. So it kind of makes it all look pastel. And it kind of makes it look like a crazy quilt. 
Uh, that's another idea you could do with your scraps, ladies. You could take all those fancy stitches on your embroidery machines and you could just lay, glue your pieces out onto your backing and then just stitch the edges down and make a crazy quilt. That's kind of what this is. Okay, so now we're getting to the tricky part. So I've stitched down all of this. I still have loose pieces here that have not been stitched down. But if I flip this up, it's not really going to matter if they come undone. The ones that are stitched down are not going to move. I can just reposition these. And... The great thing about this fabric is it does not stick to anything except the batting. So I'm just going to move it out of the way and then lay out more pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and advance my quilt uh, again. I am enjoying this. This is a quick quilt. I don't know how many hours I've been out here, but this is certainly faster than piecing blocks. Okay, so I'm not halfway done. I'm gonna say I'm a third of the way done. And I have emptied only two gallon Ziploc bags of scraps. So I could make many of these mini. Um, I do not sort my scraps and if I would have done that before I started I could have got more randomness so for those of you who have OCD I recommend organizing by color before you start a project like this so that you can get the true effect that you want. Uh, I've started to leave big pieces in and only trim off little pieces every now and then. It is very visually interesting. Uh, my mom's quilt friends are having Quilt Guild today and mom's redoing her sewing room and has got it all set up how she wants it. And so some of the ladies came over and they just love this idea and told me if I needed more scraps, they would give me some. Well, I think we all could give scraps, quite a bit of scraps, and still have plenty left over. So, yeah, this, this project, uh, I don't know what time it is. Um, I'm going to assume it's about 1.30 in the afternoon. I started at 9. So, I've made good progress. I've made a couple of mistakes. I'm not locking my lockers on the long arm, but I'm not going to worry about that. I think I am, because this fabric doesn't stretch, I think I am going to reload this after I get the, this all on there, turn it 90 degrees, and um, quilt grid lines going the other way. But I'm liking how this is turning out. I'm glad I had this idea, and I'm glad I took the chance with my scraps. Because... Otherwise, the scraps would just be sitting there not being used. And lesson learned, I, am I going to keep my scraps anymore? I don't know. Should I, should I keep my scraps? I'm kind of sick of them. We all get to that point. But this is going to be a relatively quick, quick quilt. I'm a third of the way done in four hours. And I don't know how long it takes. I mean, a jelly roll race takes about three. So I'm quilting it as I go. So I'm killing two birds with one stone, so to speak. And I like how it's turning out. I can't wait to reveal it to you. Thanks for watching.